In this video, we will be walking through the configuration of a local gateway to register to the WebEx Calling Cloud for local PSTN termination, in our case, a SIP trunk. This architecture shown here is useful for scenarios where a business wants to move to a cloud calling solution but is still under contract with their local telco, or if a gradual migration from an on-premises phone system is needed and call routing is needed between WebEx calling and the on-premises system. Cisco supports the local gateway configuration with WebEx calling using the ISR 1100 platform, the ISR 4000 series except the ISR 4221, and the Catalyst 8300 series routers, as well as the CSR1000V and the C8000V virtual platforms. Note, the ISR1100 series, CSR1000V series, and C8000V series allow for SIP-only integration, while all other models support TDM or analog telco interfacing. Also, note that separate cube licensing is not required at this time. Is included in your AFLEX subscription for WebEx calling. We're going to break up our configuration into five sections. First, we will create a local gateway definition in WebEx Control Hub. Next, we'll paste in our base router configuration including time, logging, IP addressing, and routing. In the third section, we'll configure our security and PKI settings. PKI is needed because SIP TLS and Secure RTP are required on the call leg going to the WebEx Calling Cloud. The fourth section is where the local gateway is registered to the WebEx Calling Cloud using the information obtained in Section 1. And the last section is where we can configure call routing. And finally, we'll wrap up with some show commands and a test call. Okay, let's get started. After logging into WebEx Control Hub, Go to Calling, then Locations, Next, click on the location where you will create the local gateway definition. From there, click on Local Gateway, then Edit, click Continue, then Manage. On the Manage Local Gateway screen, click the drop-down box and choose Create New Local Gateway. At this point, we will give our gateway a name and click the green check mark. This will generate a set of information unique to your local gateway that you will want to copy and paste since we will need it later in Section 4. The last thing we need to do is get our username and password for the SIP authentication. Click the Retrieve Username and Reset Password link towards the bottom of the window. A message will pop up warning it will generate a new username and password and invalidate any existing ones. Since we are setting up our router from scratch, it's fine to click yes to generate the login info. Like the other information, we need to save this to a notepad to use later. Now we have all the information we need to configure our router. Click done, then back, and finally click save. The first thing we're gonna do on our router is we're going to paste in the basic configuration allowing us to get straight to the WebEx specific configuration. At this point we have a basic router that has IP connectivity and the correct time. Let's move on to the security and PKI settings. In this third section we will start by configuring a user and a few necessary keys. Next we'll create a dummy trust point and assign it to the SIP user agent. We do this simply to enable certificate validation when setting up calls over SIP TLS. Also under the SIP user agent, we configure to use TLS version 1.2 only, as this is required by the WebEx Cloud. Since we are doing PKI, we need to make sure we have the correct set of trusted root CA certificates in our certificate store. Depending on your situation, you may already have them. To be sure, Enter this show command to see if you have any Digicert CA certs in your trust pool. In my case, I do not, so I will download them directly from Cisco using the Crypto PKI Trust Pool Import command. After the successful import, you can now see that we have a few Digicert root certificates in our store. Okay, now that we have all the prerequisites configured, we will register our local gateway to the WebEx Calling Cloud. 
You'll start by setting some global voice related settings for the gateway. I'm going to paste in the toll fraud trusted list and enter some additional baseline commands. Next, a SIP profile is needed to alter the SIP messages coming from the local gateway to be in the format expected by the WebEx Calling Cloud, including the unique identifier for this gateway. We'll set the codec, encryption algorithm, and stun usage profiles. We will use each of these in the following configurations. With the global commands complete, we'll configure the WebEx Calling specific settings. Cisco Cube allows for a multi-tenant configuration, so we will define a voice class tenant 200 that will hold the registration details for WebEx calling specifically. The first item is to identify the registrar server where our local gateway will attempt to register with the registration refresh set to two minutes. The credentials line comes next. This specifies the username password combination used for the registration process. Following this, we specify in two different formats the authentication used when calls are set up. SIP Server defines the global SIP Server interface for this router. The next two lines set up encryption parameters for SIP TLS and secure RTP. After this, the next seven lines are all for compatibility with the WebEx Calling Cloud, including using the predefined SIP profile. We will then bind this tenant's control and media to the GIG001 interface. Lastly, we will set the location where we will send outbound call setup requests using the outbound proxy command. Now, we'll wait a few seconds for the registration to be successful. Since the system attempts the registration immediately after the initial registrar command, when no credentials were specified, we have to wait for the refresh timer to time out in another attempt to re-register. We can check the status with the show SIP UA register status command. And there it is. We are now registered to the WebEx Calling Cloud. Now that we are registered to the WebEx Calling Cloud, any calls to the PSTN by WebEx calling users will be directed to our local gateway. The next configuration items will cover how to route these calls appropriately. First, we will define two voice class tenants to be used for specifying the properties of calls going outbound to the PSTN and for calls coming inbound from the PSTN. Voice class tenant 100 will be for outbound calls, and voice class tenant 300 will be used for inbound calls. Keep in mind that we already have voice class tenant 200 that covers both inbound and outbound calls to or from the WebEx calling cloud. After the tenants are defined, we will define two SIP voice class URIs. The first will match calls coming from the IPs of our telco SBCs. The second will match the pattern unique to our gateway for calls coming in from the WebEx Calling Cloud. Next, we will define our outgoing dial peers to both our Telco SBCs and the WebEx Calling Cloud. We will configure the first one and then paste in the subsequent ones. Each of these will make use of previously defined sections and we expect most viewers of this video are familiar with basic dial peers. However, the thing to make note of here is the association with these dial peers and their respective SIP tenants. Also, the destination pattern in these dial peers is simply a placeholder. We will explain why in these next few lines of configuration. We will now define dial peer groups, or DPGs. DPGs are used to explicitly pair inbound dial peers with one or more outbound dial peers which bypasses the normal pattern matching mechanism of a voice gateway when selecting an outbound dial peer. This is why the destination pattern in our outbound dial peers is irrelevant. The configuration here is simply a list of dial peers that should be tried along with their preference value, which tells us what, in what order they should be tried. You can think of this as similar to static routes in the IP routing world. Finally, 
we define the two inbound dial peers, one for calls from the PSTN and one for calls coming in from the WebEx calling cloud. Like the outbound dial peers previously defined, these make use of previously defined sections such as SIP tenants, codec voice classes, and SIP URIs. Pay special attention to the lines where we assign the DPG as the destination for calls coming into these dial peers. That's what connects both call legs together. We have now completed the configuration, but to wrap up, let's do some validation of our work. First, let's confirm we are still registered to the WebEx cloud using the show SIP UA register status command. Next, let's take a look at our dial peers using the show dial peer voice summary command. With those looking correct, let's enable debugs and make a test call from a WebEx calling registered desk phone to a number on the PSTN. Looks like the call was successful. This concludes our configuration walkthrough. Please let us know in the comments if you have any questions. We will post some useful links for using local gateways in a WebEx calling environment below.